For the past 200 years, we have built a vast infrastructure based on fossil fuels to drive growth in industry, agriculture, and mobility. And it's been great. This bountiful source of carbon energy has fueled the modern industrialized world. But the burning of fossil fuels produces, you know, carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas, and the inevitable product from the burning of hydrocarbons. The world is starting to act. More than 100 nations have joined an alliance pledging to become carbon neutral by 2050. There is some progress already. Solar and wind power, safer nuclear fission technology, and electric vehicles. But there is one sector which represents a big challenge to the aviation industry. In 2019, 300 million metric tons of aviation fuel was consumed. Aircraft require a fuel with high energy density. Space and weight are at a premium. Solar panels can't provide enough power. Batteries are not suitable either. Batteries are heavy. And their specific energy, that is energy per weight, is much lower than jet fuel. Airplane takeoff and climb require especially high power output. Hydrogen has the highest energy per weight ratio, even higher than jet fuel. Hydrogen-driven fuel cells are perfect for generating continuous electrical output, but they're not great for generating a burst of power that is needed for getting airborne. So it appears that liquid fuels combusted in gen engines may be the best way to fly. So how do we make flying carbon neutral? It's possible to capture the CO2 from the air, liquefy it under pressure, and then inject it deep underground, carbon capture and storage. Another way is to create a closed loop in which the CO2 is captured and used to make more jet fuel, establishing a CO2 circular economy. How can gaseous CO2 be converted to liquid fuels? The reverse water gas shift reaction is one way. This involves the hydrogenation of carbon dioxide to give carbon monoxide plus water. The carbon monoxide then serves as feedstock to make hydrocarbon fuels using the well-established Fischer-Tropsch process. The FT process has been done on industrial scale and requires several steps, expensive metal catalysts, and elevated temperatures and pressures. The water gas shift reaction requires very high temperatures also, over 700 degrees Celsius, and a lot of research is going into finding catalysts that can allow this reaction to proceed at lower temperature. SolarJet takes advantage of solar energy to convert carbon dioxide and water to carbon monoxide and hydrogen. In a second step, molecular oxygen is generated. Their device focuses sunlight on a cerium oxide catalyst heating it to 1,500 degrees Celsius. The carbon monoxide and hydrogen can then be converted to liquid fuels using the FT process. Other research is going into the electrochemical reduction of CO2, which requires electricity and specialty catalysts, such as copper or cobalt nanostructures. The product, again, is carbon monoxide, which can be further reduced, or it can enter the FT process. Achieving a CO2 circular economy is challenging. CO2 is thermodynamically stable. Converting it to anything like jet fuel requires inputting a lot of energy and utilizing chemical catalysis and discovering highly efficient industrial processes. But wait a minute. Is converting CO2 to fuel really that hard? Plants perform this magic every day. Photosynthetic organisms capture CO2 from the air and, using the sun's energy, split water to hydrogen and oxygen and reduce the CO2 to stored energy, carbohydrates or lipids. All animal life depends on this process. Plants, trees, algae, and cyanobacteria have evolved over billions of years, the molecular machinery to carry out photosynthesis. So why don't we let the plants do what they do best and take on the heavy lifting of converting this greenhouse gas to useful fuels? Photosynthetic organisms create over 100 billion metric tons of biomass per year. Biomass represents the only renewable energy source that contains carbon. So how is biomass converted to jet fuels? There are several methods. Vegetable oil derived from oil seed crops or waste oil from cooking and conversion to jet fuel is the most direct way. Many of these plant-derived oils can be refined using methods similar to what is done today for crude oil. 
The gas-to-jet approach processes biomass, for example, wood chips, in a gasifier to produce syngas, which is a mixture of carbon monoxide plus hydrogen. These gases are then converted to jet fuel using the established Fischer-Tropsch process. The alcohol-to-jet process involves the fermentation of biomass to produce alcohol, such as ethanol. Alternatively, the biomass may first be treated with hydrolytic enzymes to produce sugars, which are then fermented to give alcohols. Several more industrial steps are required to produce jet fuel. Biomass production, however, requires a lot of land and water that may be better suited for food production or simply left as wilderness for the promotion of biodiversity. There are ways to avoid the use of land. Bioengineered microalgae have excellent photosynthetic efficiency and carbon fixation capabilities. The microalgae are grown in photobioreactor tubes using the energy from the sun to drive photosynthesis. The tubes can be attached to the effluent from a power plant or factory. The CO2 is captured by the algae and converted to oil. The microalgae cell walls must be broken down with sonication, the oil extracted and then refined into fuel. These organisms can produce oil up to 50% of their dry weight. This approach is much more land efficient than conventional biomass production and uses 10 times less water. At this point, there is no obvious single path forward to achieve carbon neutral aviation. It is going to take a combination of technologies and approaches, including conservation, to achieve net zero carbon by 2050. All of these are going to be more expensive than fossil fuels, and it will be the responsibility of the flying public to pay for the actual cost of aviation in a carbon neutral world. If you like this video and want to see more science sketch animations, please click the subscribe button.